is happening, everybody? Welcome to Off the Rails, a recovery podcast dedicated to ending the stigma of addiction through open discussion on all things recovery related. My name is Mark, and with me always are Dave and Jared. And today we've got a special guest that Jared's going to introduce. Yeah, we got Jordan Tomlin here. Uh, partied lots with him back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my buddies. And we're excited to hear his story about recovery and where he's at today. So take her away, Tomlin. Yeah, well, I'm excited to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, I'm just a, I'm a big fan of the of the podcast and, you know, what you guys are trying to do. So I'm just like, you know, super excited to be here. But um, yeah, where, where do you guys want me to start? Because, um, you know, it's been quite a journey, um, you know, from my active addiction to recovery. So yeah, we'll get to, we'll start right from the beginning. Um, thanks for joining us again. Um, just tell us a bit about your life, man, where you grew up, uh, you know, what your childhood was like. Childhood was wicked. I have an awesome, like my family is super, super supportive. Like all of them have been, you know, by my side the whole, the whole time. Like, you know, I, you know, and, and just, you know, too much, you know, they've put so much effort and, you know, it's just now that I'm sober and I I've seen, you know, kind of, you know, how much uh, damage, I guess I did with them, like just trying to, you know, get me better. It's just like, you know, kills me, right? It's like the the one thing that really, you know, I find keeps me guilty, but just like, they're, they're too good. They're too supportive. So, you know, I grew up in a really great, great house. My, my parents are, you know, pretty well off and um, my brother is, uh, seven years younger than me. He's, uh, he's really, we're really close. And I got a sister that's, uh, three years younger than me and they're, they're awesome. My sister's the golden child of the family. Never, never been in trouble, you know, just, uh, just, just awesome. Just never has a bad thing to say about anyone. Just, uh, she's, she's wicked. I love her. My brother, um, you know, is playing hockey in Arizona right now. He's like, me and him are very similar in the terms of, uh, you know, um, like personality wise, but I feel like, you know, him watching me through my active addiction has really kind of kept him away from, you know, even getting into any substances. Like, you know, he's just so scared to get into that. Like, I, and, and, you know, it's not that I'm proud of, you know, that, but, you know, I know that, you know, it was a, a big, a big thing that he just never wanted to go through himself right he just he just you know it was just too much for him to even watch so he's doing well so i'm happy for him when did the uh when did you start to get into i guess um you know drinking or or, or drugs that um uh, yeah i guess like when you talk about my, my drug of choice it's hard it's hard to say every time i get i get asked this because i'm, I'm a poly user I don't know if you guys like, you know, I, I, every different stages of my life, I've had different, you know, different issues with different substances. Like I've, I've sold drugs, you know, I've been selling, I sold drugs since I was in grade nine and uh, it just, as my life went on, it just um, different drugs got introduced. And then, you know, I just, my, my, the addictive part of me just, goes all in you know it's just like all or nothing and it was just you know I was I was dealing so it was keeping me keeping my ad 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 addiction alive because I was you know supporting it with my with my drug with my drug money right so um it, it started with just weed and cocaine and uh it, it really started to change when I went I went to jail for the first time um and that's when my life really kind of took a took a took a took the big took a big turn. I started uh, doing the heroin and fentanyl, so that's like kind of like you know when I say drug of choice, it, it, heroin and fentanyl was definitely the worst part of it. But you know, Xanax and codeine, and you know, it was just a lot of a lot of substances and just a lot of a lot of bullshit. You know that I was just. Uh, I was just so lost in my in my ways and thought I thought thought I was the man thought I was like you know had all the money and you know had the drugs and I was just you know had had this thing in my head where I was like you know thought it was I was the man by doing this right and it just like 
you know, I had, I had it so wrong and it, you know, it, it took me getting actually like five months sober before, you know, I realized how stupid and, you know, just crazy my, how my, like the way I was thinking and acting, right. I died, I died, you know, I died off the fentanyl twice, like, um, you know, so that's like, you know, that was where it was like, okay, things need to change. Like, you know, I could, I, I'm, I'm lucky to be here right now. So it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it's been a long journey. Right. So I'm just, uh, I'm happy to be here and so, and be sober. So, um, I know we used to hang out a lot. Um, and then you kind of just like disappeared. Did you just go isolate and use drugs pretty well? You know, so like, that's the thing. Like, you know, I, when I was used to party with you guys, it was a lot more, a lot more casual. I was just doing a lot of cocaine, like not a lot of cocaine, but I was doing quite a bit. And, you know, we were all just partying on the weekends. Right. I didn't have like a super bad problem and it just, uh, when I went to jail, you know, I, and I don't doubt any of you, like my, my boys that I was super close with, like, you know, when I went to jail and, you know, they saw how crazy I was, I was acting when I was, you know, taking the Xanax, like, I don't know if you're around for the Xanax phase, like, you no, know, bro. that's just like when I started losing all my friends and I don't, I don't doubt any of them right now. Like, you know, I'm actually like, you know, they, 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 they just couldn't watch what I was going through. And I, and you know, what I, I hold nothing against them right now because I've reached out to them. They've said, you know, like I, I, I kind of made it my amends, right. I did like my steps. So, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was hard because yeah, I just, uh, I lost touch with all, all of you guys. Right. And like, you know, I, I really, and, and I really missed you guys. Like, and when I, when I got out of jail, yeah, I got, I got lonely. I got super depressed like that. I, you know, me and D couldn't, couldn't talk. Like it was just like, you know, we had court court order that we couldn't talk. And like, I just started using like by myself and I just got like so depressed. Right. And I just like, that's like my best friend, like my, my, like almost like my brother. Right. He was like, um, but you know, I was almost ashamed too. And so that's why I kind of isolated. I didn't want anybody to know the drugs I was using. Uh, Cause like, you know, out in public, you know, everybody saw me and like, you know, they'd be like, holy fuck, man. Like you, you're just fucking slurring your words. You're fucking just, you know, and it's embarrassing, right? It's embarrassing to like look back on. So like, I just started using alone in my house and uh, you know, that's when it got dangerous though. Right. Cause you know, um, no one's around to give you that the Narcan or anything like that but you know my dad coming in and you know checking on my breathing and stuff at night like it's just like it, you know it was a lot um it, it, it was a uh, the friends my friends losing my friends is probably the hardest part to deal with so it, it probably it, it was like you know um the drugs were like a big part of numbing that out, right? Just to kind of forget it. Like, you know. Um, Jordan, you mentioned uh, like it kind of changed when you went to prison, um, you know, you, like you're using. Um, and we've had like a lot of, we've we had a couple people who've been to prison on the podcast and they said like, it's just as easy to get drugs in there. Um, oh, yeah. Is that is that where you uh, like made it, you said like you did Coke and or whatever. Uh, yeah so start it, using a prison something else you're right exactly like so like when I went in um you know you start meeting certain people and and when before I went in there that wasn't like my 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 group of friends were pretty you know pretty uh you know they all were pretty well off and you know they weren't into the 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 drugs that you know I was getting introduced to in jail because it was like all crystal meth it was all you know heroin it was like the hard 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 stuff right um and you know it just my addictive personality like you know as soon as it, you're, you're in jail you got nothing to do right and so you know I, I i did a taste of you know the 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 fentanyl while i was in there and then i met a couple friends and when i got out of there i started hanging out with those guys like you know and i, I just i actually started using needles 
And that's like, that's a hard thing for me to say. That's like, took me a long time, long time, you know, only my family knew, which is embarrassing. My dad, you know, would find them, but um, that was the, that was the hardest part for me to be able to say to people because, you know, the stigma behind, you know, using needles is so, you know, so disgusting and it is, it is just disgusting. And I just, I, I, I'm so embarrassed by it, but I have to own it. Right. You know, I can't sit there and, uh, you know, just kind of hate myself for it. I gotta, you know, but it, it, it was, uh, it was, yeah, it was tough, but you know, it's, uh, it feels good now that I've, I've been able to like talk to people about it and, uh, you know, kind of give them my side of the story, I guess, because people like to talk and <laughs> yeah. I think you need to talk about it too, to like stay sober and stay accountable. It's I, well, it helps for me anyways, to talk about my problems and stuff. So I think it's probably better that you're talking about it anyways. <clears throat> and it probably yeah. honestly helps more people than you know, and helps more people that are just struggling in silence. Right. Right. Exactly. And, you know, I come from a great home, like, you know, like my, my parents, you know, I, I'm living in a, a million dollar house and, you know, I couldn't come from a better, more supportive family. And, you know, look at all the shit I got into, like, you know, drugs do not discriminate. Like, and that's like the one thing I was like, I just want to share is like, I was so ashamed with, you know, my, my, the end where my drugs of choice and how I was using. And, you know, it was just like, you know, because of who I am, everyone, everyone was like, yo, what are you doing here? What are you doing at this? You know, why, why are you down here buying, you know, you shouldn't be down. You're not like the type of guy to be down here buying. And it's just like, I used to hate when people say that to me, you know, I'd be buying some heroin and people would be like, you know, oh, you, you, you shouldn't be down here, like, you know, you, and, and it is, it's true, like, right, it's just, like, but it, it made me not, not, like, very not judgmental, because I met some really, really great guys, really great guys that just grew up in a, in a bad environment, and couldn't, really didn't have any options, right, but they were great people, like, they're, they're, you know, super respectful, and, you know, and, for me, it opened my eyes up because it's, but I've seen both sides and, you know, I just, I, I met a lot of really, really great guys in there that, you know, uh, were really solid, you know, actually like good people that like, you know, you could trust. And that's what I, that's what I took away is like those guys really, they're all about respect and trust. And like, you know, that is like all that, you know, and for me, it's just like for a friend, that that's all I need. Right. And when I went to jail and I saw how many friends just fucked off and didn't, didn't talk to me, it was just really opened my eyes up to like who was real and who was like just around because of money and drugs. Right. So, so Jordan, you get out of, out of jail and, and you're, um, you know, getting into some heavier stuff. Um, how long did that uh, kind of last? Like what was that time frame? So my, like my last like three years I've been using fentanyl and uh, that was like, you know, um, yeah, that's like been my, my drug of choice for the last three years. Um, but I've always been, you know, I was using cocaine and crystal meth the whole time I was doing that. Right. It was um, a little mixture of both because I couldn't be around the house, like on the not like nod father. Right. I can't, you know, my parents, or just like, you know, I just couldn't be walking around the house like that. So I had to have like something to keep me alert, right? But it was just another substance that I had to, you know, um, kick when I when I was coming off the dope. So um, yeah, it was, uh, it was just, um, yeah, probably three years, three years of using it after. So what happened, man? Um, you made like, so you went to rehab. Uh, was there any like particular event or anything that you were, you were just like, hmm, yeah, let's do rehab. I actually got court ordered to go to rehab. It was court ordered and which, which is the problem. Right. And, you know, my parents put a ton of money into this rehab and um, I, I it wasn't my choice to go. I didn't, I didn't want to go. I had, I, I was told by the court I had to go, which was the issue. Right. I, I was there and, 
I told them what they wanted to hear, blah, 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 just this and that, coast my way through it. I was high the day I got out, right? And uh, I can admit that now, you know, like, um, and it was a wicked rehab. Not saying I didn't take, because honestly, I took away so much stuff from there, even though I like, I, I wasn't sober when I left. I just, I learned so much about myself and I actually did take away a lot of stuff from it. But um, yeah, it was, uh, I kind of hate myself for it because, you know, it was such a, good opportunity for me to just turn everything around and you know I probably wouldn't have went to jail four times again after that right if I actually stayed sober so it's just another uh you know uh should have cut up what whatever um you know I, I feel it was just a learning curve so so did you end up going back to a re another rehab after that or you kind of just yeah I actually own, ended up going back to the same one and um, so I got it. So I got it. I went to jail again for the second time and I got it. And I, this, at this point I was on the Xanax. I was doing Xanax and uh, sit, I was coding the lean. These were my drugs of choice. Like my first like couple of times I went to jail. And the problem with Xanax was I black out. I black out on them and I get super, super aggressive. I get super um, you know, I just like, I, I, but I don't remember it. So, you know, my parents had to call the cops on me and, uh, you know, I, I ended up going there the second time and then they went out and I was just sitting at my house. I got, I was out for like maybe two weeks and I was just getting so fucked up, like with all my friends and my dad comes up to my room and he's just like, all right, you're going to rehab tomorrow. So like, you know, pack your bags. And I was just like, <laughs> Like, fuck, I'm going to, sorry, I don't know if I can, um, yeah, you swear, man. Um, <laughs> um, I was like, yeah, yeah, like, no, not happening, like, and he's like, no, you're, you're going, so back, but I, I just, you know, brought a bunch of drugs with me, and I got there, and they brought me to the hospital, the detox, dropped me off there, and I just was chilling with some guy. <laughs> some guy had a bottle of vodka sitting there. And I'm just like getting fucked up with this guy at the hospital. It was a joke. The, the second time I went, I was really disappointed with how, how they're running stuff there. Because they just dropped me off and just kind of was like, all right, let me know when you're done. And I was just like, okay. Like, <laughs> I was just chilling at the hospital. And then they picked me up. And um, I stayed the night. And I actually, um, I met a girl there and I hooked up with her and I got kicked out the second day. So I actually had to go. Home. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, those, that, those phone yeah, calls, you know, that phone call to my mom, I'm telling you, I, uh, she was so mad. I could hear her fucking, just, sorry just, right, well, you know, hey mom, yeah, you got to come pick me up. I got kicked out for you know, doing this and that. And she was just drive four hours to come pick me up. I'm like, oh man, she was pissed, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so what yeah. happens after that, man? Um, so after that, you know, I, so I get out and I actually am on house arrest. While I was using, I was a terrible guy. I, I was a terrible human. I was like, honestly, the worst human you could fucking like, sorry. And like, you know, I was just cheating on my girlfriend all the time. And like, she, she was a really good girl. She was a teacher. She like really wasn't into dope. Like she really like just kind of, you know, um, was just, just didn't know anything, but just kind of clueless to it. So like, you know, but I was not good to her. And, you know, I was just the worst person, like, you know, in the world, just lying and thinking that it was like, cool, right? Thinking I was like, being like the man getting away with all this shit, like, you know, just being like, you know, I can get away with anything, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it was just like the dope making me feel like I was someone else. Like, it was just, you know, just stupid now that I think about it. But um after that, I, I, I went to, I went to um, jail for the fourth time. I did eight months. Um, I got out and um, I haven't, I haven't been to, I haven't gotten in trouble since. So that was my last time I've been out five years now. So, um, 
it's just been yeah uh my parents are that they're, they're they're done with jail they said you know you fuck up again because i i went in and out i think four times and it was just breaches it was just you know i was on house arrest i get a breach house arrest breach and it was just dumb shit dumb shit and uh you know, my parents were like, we're done with this, you know, spent like, you know, 20 grand on a lawyer, you know, 40 grand on rehab, you know, they're like, you know, we, we've done enough, you know, please, you know, we can't do it no more. And I don't doubt them. I don't doubt them at all. Right. So that's been my big, my big focus on, you know, just staying out of jail. And, uh, you know, it wasn't, um, yeah, that's just, that's just like my, my my new thing i'm just staying out of trouble and uh you know now that i'm sober i'm ta- i'm going to take my real estate course um in september and you know my mom's a real estate uh my real estate agent right now so um you know i'm going to join her and like we're going to have a little team so you know i you know big things that are you know um coming my way i hope um and you know that's just comes with sobriety right and I just I'm just see all the little things that you know people were just telling me you know uh, things will get better and you'll start noticing them and it you know I I really I really am now and I'm starting to appreciate like you know how the the little things with the sobriety right like you know it's just kind of yeah so have you have you been uh I mean you went to rehab it was a while ago the first one first time you went but have you been utilizing some of those tools they kind of teach you for uh, your so, recovery now? Yeah. So, um, for me, um, it's different. You know, I, I, I tried the NA and the big book and I find a mixture of both for me. I, I need, cause I need, I need someone to talk to My therapist is my, is the, you know, cause I'm a big talker. When I go to meetings, like, for NA, I'll sit there and I'll talk the whole time. People get so annoyed with me, right? It's like, you know, I just like, you know, it's just like kind of my ADHD and I'm just like sitting there and I just like, you know, and, but you can't, you can't cross talk either. And I'm like cross talking and people are like, really like, and I'm just like ruining the meeting. Right. So I just like, you know, I just, I prefer a one-on-one and uh, I just got, I stay, I got to stay busy though. Like by well, either if it's like working out or going to work, and you know it's just a combination of uh like i have a couple of people that you know i i i don't say i don't like to say i'm a sponsor but you know a couple of my like friends that reached out and they're like you know because it's it's kind of like you know no one thought i was gonna get could get sober like it was like you know and it's kind of like that's that's been keeping me sober you know the people that have been doubt like and i've been sober a year and four months and like i haven't relapsed yet which is like you know a big you know big everyone's like you know because uh, relapse is kind of a part of recovery right and um you know thinking about re- thinking about using right now to me it gives me like you know I, it gives me almost a panic attack you know, just thinking about fucking up the everything I've been doing and, you know, uh, all the progress I've made, like, you know, it's just, I can't see myself going back there and like, you know, it's just, right. It's just such a, it's such a, like, you know, it's like one of my highest, like anxiety, um, things I worry about. So like, you know, I think that brain's so fucked though. Like I could, I even like, start thinking about it too sometimes and i'm like but then i just gotta slow down and just realize what it does like it my family i've almost lost my family like actually did and then got them like thank god they stayed with me but like it's crazy so you just i think uh playing the tape through till the end like is uh a huge one yeah yeah oh yeah for sure and you know like oh fuck i can't i couldn't ask for more for my parents right like and it's just uh they're 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 like my dad and my mom are like my my biggest support system like that's i don't hang out with anybody right now i really don't have any friends like you know my couple of my boys are you know just doing their thing they're all they're they're pretty busy with their lives like but you know i just i had to 
wipe my whole friend list. Like, so I, I, you know, it gets lonely and, you know, I just got to keep my eye on the big, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost there to get my pardon. I'm like in the progress of getting my pardon right now. And, you know, I finished school. I've had, I've got, I've got my degree, you know, from uh, St. Lawrence. So, you know, I, I've had a couple of good job opportunities that are just, uh, I, I lost because of my, my record, right? So um, that's a big thing I'm looking towards, you know, that pardon will, will help me a lot, you know, in terms of, you know, um, you know, I'll be able to go to visit my, I can't go to my brother's graduation. My br brother's graduating this week in Arizona. And I can't go down and, you know, celebrate it with them because I have a friggin' record. So I have to stay here. And, you know, that that sucks. That really sucks to me. So, you know, I wish I could be there for him. And, uh, you know, I'd be living on his couch, honestly, right now if I could. And, like, I would honestly, like, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to get rid of me. But, like, you know, whatever. Soon enough, hopefully. So that's just, like, you know, I keep my eyes on the pro on the prize um how did you start your recovery like what what all went into it um so honestly like i so i died i died the first time i actually you know i overdosed um and i got narcan and then my dad kept on finding me in my room and like i was just on, like on the nod father right just had my head just like kind of just you know half on the bed half like you know and just embarrassing stuff he's like coming to put his, his like sleep at mask he like i woke up like four times from him like trying to put his sleep mask on me cuz like my breathing's so shallow right and like you know it's just like i got so i just got sick of being so like getting sick and having them know that I'm dope sick that was like the worst because I lived at their house and like you know I can't, it's hard to hide being dope sick especially like coming off the fentanyl but um at the beginning I I literally I didn't sleep for seven days I just literally stayed at home and I, I was just in my room and I I just was puking shit in my pants and uh, you know I just I just isolated, man. I isolated and that was a big problem. Like it wasn't a problem. It kept me sober for a long time, just isolating, but I wasn't living my life. Right. You know, and that's what I kind of like realized after a while, like after like six months, I was like, you know, this is good that I'm staying sober, but I'm, I'm really not um, living, living my life, just sitting at home and just kind of, you know, so I started, you know, going out more and just, you know, kind of testing my, um, you know, how well I can handle being out on my own without having my dad right by my side, you know, watching over because he had to take, he get, he took all, I, I gave him all my money. He still holds my money. Um, that way, you know, I, I can, I couldn't take something and sneak out at night. You know, I, I, I know myself and I had to literally take away every you know, I, I live out in Isle of Man Road, way out of town. And, you know, I, I have no car. He won't, he took the keys away. He holds my money and, you know, just took every, every, you know, way I could get out and get dope. I just took away because I know, I knew I was going to do it. Right. If I got, um, and that was the only way I could really get sober, you know, and he still holds my money to this day, but, um, you know, I, I, I am, you know, going to move out and, the, that I feel like that's the you know I'm almost in the pink cloud you know you know the pink cloud when you're at rehab when you feel like you know you feel like you're so so confident in your recovery and but you're really you know you're really just at home and you're in your comfort zone but when I move out and I'm on my own you know I'm worried about you know the stressors or you know the you know, not having someone there to kind of tell me to smarten up, right? Like, you know, it's just, um, it, it's it's just, you know, I'm nervous about it, but, you know, it's just, uh, it's taken a year and like five months for me to be kind of ready to actually do it. So, um, yeah, I just, that's a, it's going to be a big test in my recovery, I think, for sure. That is I think you're pretty good because you've had a year and five months to of feeling so good you probably never want to go back to the way you were no but you I never know. know 
right and you, you can't say it never right and like that's like you know but I it's work whatever whatever I'm doing right now is working so you know and I take nothing away from people who are doing NAAA and if that works for you like all, all means like you know you do your thing but um I just find uh I, I really just need um my co- cognitive behavioral therapy is is it was a huge part of my recovery I had to I had to find my underlying my underlying issues to deal with them before I could even think about getting sober because you know you can you can follow those rules and those steps and do all that stuff you want but you know I had some real issues that I was that I was self medicating for right and um, you know Bob Bob couldn't Bob couldn't cure that for me so I had I found um, like CBT therapy with my with my therapist and uh, you know just working on you know my issues and and it, and that's that's been the it's been hard but you know it's a it's something that I've been numbing and you know these feelings I don't want to feel that I've just been kind of pushing away but. Um, I got to deal with them now. And it's just, you know, it's, uh, it feels good, but you know, it's hard at the same time, you know, recovery is not a, a walk in the park, but I just found NA and AA. I didn't want to wake up every morning and, you know, kind of, you know, remind myself that I'm an addict, you know, I, I want to be able to go through my day and try and not think about dope or, you know, anything. I just want to focus on my day and be happy and just, you know, not always like you know reading my book doing the steps and this and that and like you know i just find it's just too uh too much uh yeah i can't do it i don't know if you are are you guys are you guys doing the steps in the big book or are you guys um how how do you guys do your recovery um i'm in aa but but, uh yeah i find that's even if i miss a couple meetings i I have to go back. Um, yeah, I got to be consistent with that or else. Yeah, you find the meetings. I, I, yeah, I start getting all fucked up, like sideways mentally, if not. Um, really? I don't I don't think like, I don't think I could have stayed sober just from rehab if I didn't go into the AA program after and be consistent with it. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. And like, yeah, I don't take away anything any, like from anyone that does that, you know, because my dad is, my dad's AA and uh, he, he's been AA for four years and he, that's kept him sober, right? So um, it's definitely two types of, we got two different types of recovery, like, and it's, it's interesting because we live in the same house, right? So it's nice to have someone to talk to about it also, like, you know, because he gets it, you know, he's a... Uh, he's a he's he's a recovering alcoholic but um you know it's just nice to have you know a parent that's a support system and also like someone i can talk to about that stuff yeah that's awesome even this podcast is pretty cool because we like have people on that have had so many different recoveries so it's like whatever recovery works best for you is that's exactly that's exactly i was it's funny you said that because i was thinking that and you know i just like so many people get turned away from recovery by, you know, the thought of doing a, and they like, you're just, every time I hear something, they're just like, fuck that. I don't want to do like, you know, the, you know, this and that, this, that and they get so like turned, it's all about God and this. And they, there is like, you know, people get, um, there's different like stigmas between the big book. They think it's all about God and like, you know, kind of like a cult like you know they don't really get it but you know that i've seen people just be like no like that and they think that's the only option though they think that's the only option to get sober and like you know that that bugs me because you know i i I hate being around those guys in the meetings and being like hey like you know if this isn't working for you you don't don't go to a meeting like you know but you can't you can't be at a meeting and say that right you know it's just Uh um, uh i just it's you have to find something that works for yourself but you know I just uh I I need I need a bit of both you know I need someone to talk to and someone and just something to keep me busy which is really um all I need yeah man I go to NA and uh I don't like follow like I don't follow the 12 steps or I don't like work 
work on the actively work on the steps i find i like going and just kind of sharing with people and kind of yeah. talking about the recovery like that's what i take from it um because mm. like you said like right at the beginning i was kind of kind of against going to it because of the whole higher power thing right mm. and that does yeah. turn a lot of people off but you know if you go there and take away what you you know what you can or share or whatever like whatever helps you in your recovery man is, is what I exactly think. exactly and uh you know I, and then i don't take away from anybody that you know uh, if that works for you then you know all the power to you but you know the 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 number for recovery is like three percent of addicts like actually stay sober that number is is super super scary to think about right yeah you know it's just such a low low number and that's just for me it was just you know if you know it wasn't working for five years five years I was in and out of the program going to meetings trying this and that I tried so hard to be a part of it but I just found I just yeah, I wasn't successful, like, you know, and just um, wasn't until I went to rehab and they were like, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do the steps. You know, we, we, we actually, um, and then they introduced me to the cognitive hair book therapy. So they're like, you know, that's a big thing. Now I find a lot of the rehabs are doing CBT therapy uh, over the 12 steps now, because yeah, it's just, um, there's like smart recovery too, where it's like, uh, have you heard of that? Yeah. Um, that's like all science based, not uh, religion based. Yeah. I have tried that because I just got hooked to AA real quick. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Jordan, Jordan, I'll say uh, it's nice hearing like, you know, your point of view on, on your recovery and what you did. Cause, um, you know, sometimes, I mean, we're all still fresh with it you know six mm -hmm. months now on the recovery and and a lot of times like i wasn't really digging the meetings too much like i was going because it was part of you know the recovery plan i had yeah um and i like i really enjoyed them early on and then i started to kind of not really enjoy them mm -hmm. um and then i kind of felt like oh shit like what's wrong with me like a lot of people seem to be liking these like am i not gonna last in the recovery and all that so like it's nice hearing cool. you know people's stories and how they've done it differently and and that kind of stuff too. So even, you know, by you sharing that kind of, you know, helps myself. I'm sure it helps a lot of, a lot yeah, of people as well. Like, right. Yeah. And that's awesome. Like I, I really, you know, it's, it's really good to hear that because that's kind of exactly what I wanted to get across with my story was, you know, it, I tried so many different ways to get sober and like, you know, there isn't just one way. And like, you know, if, if you, if you slip and you got relapse, like, you know, you get up and you fucking re reassess your situation and, you know, you just see what's not working. And, you know, I just find like, you know, that's that that needs to be, you know, um, uh, addressed more with uh, with addiction. And, and you know, because it's just like, you know, it is all AA and that's all people think it is. But I feel like we need more of a more awareness around just uh different ways to to get sober and like stay sober right and and the, the different difference is it's staying sober and getting sober but like being happy like you said you you know you're going to the meetings and you started hating them like you know it, it's just you, you, after a while you'll just be like fuck this like this is just you know I, why am i even doing this like you know i just i, I that's what what i i found i did and then i just started using and going to the meetings but hi because like it made the meetings all right but um it, it, i've tried so many different ways but you know it's just there's not just one way and and you need to really really just focus on your your weaknesses and like you know where where you're struggling the most right you know it's I find like, you know, me just taking away all my friends and all, uh, all the influence that I like had when I was in, when I'm in town and around my friends, like, you know, it, that's how, that's what, that's how I needed to be. I needed to be alone and away from everyone. Cause I always had to be the guy with the dope and, you know, always like wanted to be, you know, just like be the, that, the, the man, you know, the man of the, the, the hour, like, and I found just, you know, I needed to really sit back and reassess, you know, how I was thinking and, you know, 
the way I was thinking in active addiction because it, it was like 10 years of use, right? So, you know, it's, you're literally trying to re, uh, le- relearn everything about yourself, right? And, you know, I, like I'm a totally different person now and I'm sober, like compared to when I was using, right? I'm, I'm actually, it, the, the, but the dope, um, you know, made me super social, gave me a lot of confidence, um, you know, just, it, it was a lot, a lot of things that I'm dealing with now, you know, now, now I'm more, i have more, uh, I'm more introverted, I guess now I'm not as like, you know, I'm not as loud and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I keep to myself and I'm pretty quiet, but you know, it's just so different from the way I was in active use. I was used, I was so like always talking, like just fucking just so like up, but you know, it's just, it's just different. I'm just like, you know, relearning how, like who I am and like, you know, I, I'm actually like, I really enjoy it. Right. Cause um, I'm just, you know, it, it's making me happy f- figuring out where I'm, where, where I'm going wrong and dealing with those issues. And then, I just, I, I feel so much better that I've actually addressed it. And, you know, I, I'm just, I'm still sober. Right. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. It's awesome, man. I'm glad you're doing good. Yeah. Thanks. I really appreciate it, man. I, I honestly, uh, you know, it, and, and that's the thing people, you know, my dad's, my dad had my, my funeral planned, you know, he had my funeral planned out for me. And when he told me that, like, that was a big fight that hit me hard like you know that hit me really hard he was ready for me to be for me to be dead and that was like a big thing keep me like you know stay sober and like if my dad you know my dad's that 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 you know made me cry like I was like you know that was so hard for me to hear but you know it's just been a big big reason why you know I'm staying sober and like you know just like you know hearing you 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 say that and all my friends you know say say how much better I I I am and like you know how how proud they are with um you know my progress like you know that that keeps you going right like you know that's a that's 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 just it's good to hear and it just like you know keeps you keeps you motivated to stay stay sober so stay sober help others yeah yeah exactly buddy or do you find uh you find your relationship with like your family and stuff has grown grown stronger with your sobriety oh fuck. oh man <laughs> like just it's it's so much better and so the trust is back and you know they're not just i'm not just a write-off right like it was just like you know th- there was at the point where it was just they were so used to it that you know, it was just, oh, Jordan's fucked up again. He's just, I'm going to nod father, like had my face in the spaghetti plate, like, you know, at dinner. And like, you know, they were just, they just stopped, stopped caring. And like, you know, now that, you know, just hearing my mom say how proud she is of me and like, you know, it's just my brother, you know, well, my brother's, you know, wasn't going to put up with any more of it, but he, he didn't, he said, if I kept using, he wasn't going to talk to me anymore. You know, there's a, there's a lot of factors that like, you know, I know I have to do it for myself, but you know, I love my family. And and if I, if I lost them, it would be, you know, I don't even know it, like, you know, it would just, I don't even know how I do it. Like, I don't even know if I could do it. Right. But that's a big reason why I, I stay, I'm keeping the, the path I'm on right now. So yeah, man, I believe uh, you got to do it for yourself, but anything that motivates you to stay sober is a huge added bonus. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, and, um, and yeah, and people say, you know, anything you put in front of your addiction, you lose, like, you know, and, and that there, there's a truth to that for sure. But like, I find like, you know, that exactly like, you know, a little bit of motivation from the outside, like, you know, that little voice in my head, you know, when I, when I feel like I want to use, and it's just like, you know, you know, fuck what it would, you know, if they find out, you know, you're fucked. And I losing my brother is like, you know, fuck that. It's not worth losing. It's not worth using. Right. You know, so that's just a big, yeah, big thing that keeps me sober and keeps you going. Uh, it sounds like you got a great support system there and uh, they're, you know, big fans, you, you know, I got some huge fans in your corner, but 
have you guys had, have you had to kind of set some boundaries, you know, living with your parents, the trust maybe, you know, isn't quite fully there yet in certain situations oh, and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. For sure. For sure. Cause you know, I, I moved out when I was, you know, uh, 16, I moved out and like, you know, I, I was always, selling, I was, uh, I was selling dope the whole time and I was supporting myself and it was a big change when I had to come back. Right. And, you know, just like you said, like boundaries and stuff at, at first, there was none. And I was just doing my thing and thinking I was, you know, getting away with it and thinking they weren't noticing. And, you know, it was just, I was, I was not, I, I was just crossing so many boundaries, you know, I was getting high and just fucking making a fool of myself all around the house. Like, you know, and then I'd be screaming at people and fucking ripping my door off the hinges, like dumb shit like that. And like, um, you know, now it's just, um, there's there's no like you know and stuff gets said right when you're fighting with your family and people you care about you know that they're the only people that can get me really really you know that angry and up up to that energy but like and then you say stuff and then you fucking well then you hate yourself for it and then you use to try to forget about it right um and i find that that you know there's been none of that like you know and and i find that's just because I have that voice in my head saying, you know, uh, yeah, don't flip out. Like, you know, it's not worth it. Like what the fuck, you know what I mean? It's just, there's not, there's no more of that. And it's just made such a difference with, you know, the trust. Now I can, I get the car again and, you know, it's just, yeah, I'm going to be moving out here in a couple of months, but, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's just going to be interesting, right? Cause, uh, it's going to be a big change, but I feel like, you know, if I just keep doing what I'm doing and, you know, uh, they're still, they're, they're still, they're still around. So, you know, it's not like I can just give them a call, but, um, you know, I just, uh, it's nice to, you know, I, I, I like, you know, the podcast is, has been like, you know, showed me like, you know, there's a lot more people that, cause I have no friends right now that, you know, are doing, are doing the same thing as me. You know, I have friends that, are partying and they use coke and and or do whatever but they do it recreationally and like they just won't <laughs> hang out with me because they don't want it want it around right and like you know that that's fine and they can do their thing but you know um i can't be around it so i just i just find you know it, it gets it gets lonely but we'll go golf in the summer yeah you know and but you know like a good group of boys that you know, aren't, we're not just uh, sitting around talking about, you know, dope the whole time. Like, you know, we're out having fun and like being happy and like, you know, happy while you're being sober. Right. Cause I find, you know, if you're just sitting around, you're just going to be miserable and like fucking, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about all the, the bullshit and guilt, like that, that's been, you know, the biggest part. Right. So I just, you know, I, I love, you know, finding, you know, ways to, you know, golf is going to be huge. I'll golf for sure um, with you this summer, bud. but um, yeah, the gym has been a huge, huge help for me. I've been like, anytime I get stressed or anytime I get, um, you know, triggered like that, I, I just go take it out on fucking weights. I just go, you know, hammer it on, out on the bench press. So um you know, I'm just, uh, I, it's just like, you know, it's nice uh, to have a good group of boys that you can just sit around with and have fun and, you know, and stay sober, but, you know. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm happy that you're sober and on the right path. It's nice to see. You. Yeah, I appreciate it, bro. I really do. I really do. Yeah, that's amazing, man. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your story. Um, you know, there's always that sense of vulnerability, but, uh, you know, sharing your story helps people and, uh, you know, can help, help drag people from, you know, that, what addiction does to you. And, uh, yeah, awesome. thank so. you so much. Yeah, no, I appreciate yeah. it. There's a lot. Thanks for having me. You know, I just, uh, yeah. Anybody that I could help out, you know, that's, uh, that's awesome. So, um, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks Jordan. All right, guys, if you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, reach out and ask for help. Thanks for listening.